Hi, this video is over Biome Cabbage Down number 89 in the Essential Elements book. This video is intended as a play along lesson, so I encourage you to have your instrument play along with me at the spots in the video where that's appropriate. Take note of what time certain things start so that you can go back and try them again as you need to. If you are a bass player, please check the description. There is a supplemental video for bass players because there are some specific things about playing violin cabbage down that are a little bit different for bass. Violin, viola, cello should be fine with just this main video, but bass, there's just a couple of things. So it's a kind of short video, but I encourage you to check it out if you're a bass player. Violin cabbage down is a traditional bluegrass tune. It's been around for a long time and pretty much anyone who learns how to do any kind of fiddle music learns how to play Bilem Cabbage Down. I encourage you also to become familiar with this tune. In the description I've put links to a couple of my favorite performances of this tune. So you know, give those a watch and check out some other performances of it as well. The tempo I use throughout this lesson is 96, and that's because Essential Elements Online or Smart Music, if you has it, have it, uses 96 as the tempo. Truthfully, this tune goes a lot faster, so as you get to where you can play it pretty well, you may want to use the speed controls and play the video back at one and a half times or two times as you're able to you know, play a little bit faster. It might make it a little bit more like the original. So now I'm going to cut over to a performance of this because you can see in your book that it has A lines and B lines for all the instruments, so it goes together as an arrangement. So we're going to check out a performance of it, and then we'll be back to talk about it. One, two, three. Okay, so now that you know what it sounds like, we're going to go ahead and talk about a few things. Now, I do want to point out that at the end of this video, I've put that again, but I've taken out all the melodies. So you can play along with that one that you just listened to, or you can jump to the end of the video, and I've put a link in the description that'll take you straight to the play along track at the end where it has the same thing where you can play the melody all the way through without having those other parts in there for a little bit of independence. All right. The first thing to notice about Bile and Cabbage Down is that it is a D scale song. So it's very important to play your scale. So we're going to go ahead and warm up with a D major scale and arpeggio. I'm going to put the metronome on at 96. And again, have your instrument out and play this D scale along with me. One, two, three.
All right, and again, take note of where that started, and if you need to play your D scale through a couple of times to get it right, then you know, go back and play it a couple of times. That's very important. Next thing to notice is that Violin Cabbage Down has this repetitive rhythm. One, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and. So you've got to make sure that you really have that solid in your bow. So we're gonna go ahead and play the D scale again using that rhythm, and we'll go D, 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 E, 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 one measure of each note. A little bit more advanced, you know, if you're just working on getting that rhythm to happen in your hand, then, you know, go ahead and just worry about that. But in the bluegrass style, it's typical to accent on the offbeats. So I'm going to go ahead and play it one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and if you can get those accents to come out, then you'll be a little bit more working on the style of bluegrass music. One, two, three. All right, so now one of the things that gives people a little bit of trouble with that rhythm, so maybe you got, got it just right and that's wonderful, maybe you had a little bit of trouble with it. The thing about that rhythm that gets people is that every repetition of the rhythm changes the bow direction. So you start with a down, up, down, and then you go up, down, up. So if you had a little bit of trouble, take your bow in the air like mine is and just say these bow directions with me. Down and uh, up and uh, down and uh, up and uh, down and uh, up and uh. if you're having trouble keeping that rhythm going it's probably because of that changing in bow direction take your metronome put it on 96 and do bow in the air and just say those bow directions until you get it and then go back to that scale and try it again that's one of the things that really gets people on this rhythm speaking of the accents if you feel like you're ready to try and put in those accents, let's talk just for a moment about how to make the accent. It starts with a little bit of extra weight at the beginning of the note, coupled with a small burst of speed. Now you've got to be careful with what you do with the weight, so we know that there's three things that affect your tone quality. Bow weight, bow speed, and bow placement. Bow placement is you just want to have a you know, straight line here halfway in between the bridge and the fingerboard. I call that playing on the bow line. So you want to be there on the bow line. Your weight in this starts off with the stick bent and then immediately releases it. So it's not a steady weight to get that accent. Weight at the beginning, immediately released. And you get your weight by twisting just a little bit into your index finger. So your thumb is bent, goes up, your index finger goes down. So it's this motion, and that's true on every single type of bow, except maybe the German bass bow. We'll talk about that in the bass video. So you want to lean into your index finger. These other fingers stay nice and relaxed, and your stick should bend a little bit. Now the trick to this is that the weight doesn't stay like that all the time. Once you start playing the note, you release it. So what you're going to want to practice doing is this little bend the stick, release the bend, bend and release. And these other fingers aren't really involved. It's a very relaxed thing. Your thumb and your index finger are all that do it. So you may just want to practice pulsing the weight in your bow. And then quarter note, lean in, bend the stick, quick motion with an immediate release of that weight and that's going to give you an accent. Then you want to try that down bow. So you're going to start up over your quarter note, you get to here, bend the stick a little bit, a little bit of burst of speed while you release the weight. I'm going to put on the metronome and we're just going to do some open Ds. One, two, three, four, and one, two, and 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 three, four, and one,
You can do this with me. One, two, and three, four. All right, I hope you could see that happening in my bow as I was adding weight and then releasing it, adding weight and then releasing it. Practice that on an open string and then go back and try to put that in the scale. And once you have it in the scale, try to put it in the song, right? Okay, some other things about Boil em Cabbage Down is, you know, there's only four notes in the song. So it's not a complicated song like that. You just want to be careful that you are keeping your hand in really, really good position. So we've been talking about some bow stuff. Let's talk about some left hand stuff. Starts on an F sharp. When you place your F sharp, do you see what my third and fourth fingers are doing while I'm playing my F sharp? They're relaxed over the string. I'm being really careful not to let them do this. Now, I don't need my fourth finger in this song for an A, but I also want to be careful that I don't let my pinky curl up like this. I see kids do this all the time. They're playing an F sharp, and their pinky is down here. And even though this song doesn't use an A, lots of songs do, so it's better to just be in the habit of keeping your pinky finger relaxed and over the string. So when I go to play the song, well, I won't use the metronome for now. I go to G, my G finger's right next to the string, I go back to F sharp, and I just relax my G finger a little bit. It pops up a little bit all by itself. I don't have to lift it off the string. So as you're coming down at the end, I'm gonna to jump to the last two measures. As I'm lifting these fingers up, notice that I'm not really lifting them. Rather, I'm just relaxing them one at a time so that by the time I'm playing my open D, my fingers are relaxed all over the string and that way I'm ready to use them again. All right, and that's very important. All right, I think that's the main stuff about Boil em Cabbage Down. The next thing you need to know is a bit of a bonus round and I'm gonna go over the bonus round in another video. And that's that bluegrass music is an improvisation style. So once you get the hang of this, you should actually be working on making up variations to go along with it. So I'm gonna encourage you again, check out the description and I'm gonna put a link to a separate video that goes over how to make up your own version of Boil em Cabbage Down. At this point, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. Please like the video, subscribe to my channel if it did help you, and now we're gonna cut over, like I said at the beginning, to that same performance I did at the beginning but with all of the melody parts taken out so that you can use it for practice. So again, I hope this was helpful. And remember, keep practicing. One, two, three.